So hello and welcome back. Today we will do an example of a discrete base filter from lecture 5-1. Given a mobile robot in a world represented by a three by three grid, we are going to assume that there's an equal probability that the robot is at any location in the world. So that would be a probability of one over nine for each of the grids. And assume that the robot's pose is not relevant, so we're only gonna focus on location. So what is the posterior belief of being in each cell in the world? So the way that we're going to solve this problem is we are going to use the probability of a sensor measurement Z given a grid location will be given by the following probabilities. The probability of Z given X1, X3, or X4 is 0 0.1. The probability of Z given X2, X5, or X7 is 0 0.8. And the probability of Z given X6, X8, or X9 is 0 0.4. So recall that Bayes filter and the model had a motion model, which is the probability of X given you, which is multiplied by the current belief. And that can either be discrete or continuous, which means either a summation or an integral. And then that is multiplied by the perception model, which is the probability of Z given X, where N multiplies that value and is called the normalization constant to make sure it has a value of one. So in the continuous time, the only closed form solution for this is represented by a Gaussian model. But in a discrete time system, like what we're about to solve, you can assume that this is a histogram that has a Gaussian shape. So it has bands that model the Gaussian distribution. So the algorithm to do this is given by the following. So assume that you have a function, discrete base filter, that has an input that says, what is the probability of a posterior belief that I am in this state given this data point? So first I initialize my normalization constant to be a zero. And if my data is a perceptual data, such as Z, then I have a for loop that says, the next possible posterior belief state is based upon the probability of Z given X, given the current belief of X, and the normalization constant is equal to N plus the next posterior belief of X. And you do this for all X, so it ends up being a for loop. And then at the end, you cycle through the loop again and divide by N in order to get the normalization constant. Else, if D is an action item, U, where that's now going to be either velocity or motion control, we talked about there were two different ways to do that, then for all X, then the next posterior belief for that state is the summation over all X of the probability of X given U and the current state times the belief that it's in that current state. And then for this one, you can also return the belief for each posterior state. So what we're gonna do here is we're going to calculate the probability of being in any cell in our three by three world, given the probabilities of being in each from the sensor data. So now we're going to use MATLAB in order to solve. So here we have our MATLAB script where at the beginning here is the problem statement once again. And then we have our problem variables. So we have our normalization constant set to zero. We have the belief in being in any square within the world or any grid cell as one over nine. And then we're going to have our posterior belief for our next possible location as an initialized three by three matrix with values of zero. And then here we have our probabilities based upon that sensor value where we have 0 0.1, 0 0.8, 0 0.1, 0 0.1, 0.8.4, and 0.8.4.4. So when I run this section, what we will have is a printout of all of our initialized variables, n, b, and z. Then down here, we have a for loop where I iterate through the matrix for i equal one to three, for j equal one to three, where I use the probability of a sensor value given its location times the belief of being in that location. And then down here, I incre increment my normalization constant. So when I run this section, I get that my belief that I am in any certain cell in the world is given by the following values. And what you should see, which makes sense, is that my values two, five, and seven, which were the sensor data 
that were at X2, X5, and X7 shows that the most likely location of my robot, given its sensor data, are going to be X2, X5, and X7. So since we see here that the robot is not completely localized because there's still a 33% chance it's in three different places, you would have to continue to move through the world and collect sensor data until you're able to be 100% sure of which cell the robot is now located in. Thank you for coming. I hope you've enjoyed and have a robotastic day.